Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Race Face Spotlight. I'm Chris Murdoch, and as you can see, we're doing this episode uh, from the Race Chaser Studios here in the greater Charlotte area. Uh, it happened to be our guest today, happened to be in the greater Charlotte area. Adam Lemke, junior motorsports late model driver, uh, has been almost everywhere this, these past couple weeks. I know you just got off doing some dirt stuff on the West Coast. Let's just jump into it because I know your schedule has kind of been a roller coaster of mm -hmm. sort of emotions coming from, you know, Southern National and stuff. And talk about what it's been like this year for you kind of getting getting to know everybody and, and learning the process on the East Coast. It's, it's been a great experience just to be able to learn from all these people. And uh, the team has been a has been a great asset to me. Josh and Brian have had done a great job kind of getting to where I am today. And uh, you know, the racing is, is completely different than it is on the West Coast, and just going back and forth from each coast and racing has been a huge deal for me. Um, and you've kind of had some up and down starts this season. You know, Southern National didn't kind of go your way, and then you had um, Hickory in the Cars Tour didn't really go your way. And then Orange County in the Cars Tour was kind of a huge rebound for you. Third, talk about kind of the competition in the Cars Tour and talk about how uh, it's been, you know, racing with those guys versus guys on the West Coast. It's, uh, well, like I said earlier, it's it's a huge difference. Like, yeah. it's night and day racing with these guys out here in the, on the West Coast. These, it's like two steps above. I mean, the guys on the West Coast that do really well, we're probably, like, I relate to them, like, mid-pack or, like, really close to the front. Mm -hmm. And, like, the guys that run up front the Cars Tour or the 30,000 wind shows and the bigger ones, those guys are, I mean, they know what they're doing, like Lee Pulliam, Josh, and if you're going to win a race, you have to beat those guys. And, uh, yeah, I mean, when we won at Hickory and then the third place at, at Southern, or, I mean, um, Orange County, those were, like, that's what really got me going. Yeah, and I don't think very many people know you do a lot of traveling mm -hmm. off of, you know, living on the West Coast and coming over here. Talk about your day-to-day, -day, you know, routine coming from here and then going back there and then coming over here. What's Adam Lemke's life like right now? <laughs> Um, I mean, it takes an entire day of traveling to get here, and we usually get here really early, early in the morning, and we just sleep for like a day or so because <laughs> we're just so worn out. Um, but my dad's always working. I'm usually just hanging out at, at where we're staying, and, uh, and we come here, and we practice usually Friday nights, and then race Saturday, and then hang out for a couple more days and fly back home for a, a day or two, and then fly back. And let's talk about some of the stuff you've got coming up, because you've got so a wheel and late model race this weekend at Motor Mile. Your previous wheel and late model start at Hickory mm -hmm. kind of went really well for yeah. you. You got a sixth in the first feature and a first in the other one. Talk about that day racing with those guys in the wheel and series and, and what it meant to get your first win on the East Coast. Well, that race was just after the wreck at Southern National, so I kind of went into that race kind of knowing there was no points, there was nothing hanging over my head, and I kind of went there with just a clear mind and just going there to win. And uh, that's what we ended up doing on the second feature. And I feel like it was like a good and bad thing that happened because I obviously didn't want to wreck the weekend before. But then I went into that race without any points hanging over my head or anything, having to worry about that. And then going to those races afterwards with that momentum really helped out. And coming up to Motor Mile, you're actually here this weekend. Then you go to Ace next weekend. And then you're back at Motor Mile again mm -hmm. for another wheel and race. What's your prep like for that track? Have you talked to any of that guys at Junior Motorsports? Have you done any simulator stuff at tracks similar? What What have you done to prep for Motor Mile? I talked to Josh about the track a little bit, and uh, I know they've tested there before. Um, the track was closed down last year, but I, I know Josh has ran there before, so I'll be asking him a lot of questions like usual. Um, I ran tracks like it on the simulator earlier, like this week, and I just watched a lot of cars through videos from online and whatnot. What's it been like? from a fan standpoint you know driving for junior motorsports mm -hmm. you've had to have looked up to junior for yeah. a long time and mm -hmm. now you're you're a mentor to him and then you get the whole junior nation squad yeah. coming up to you at these these races what is what is it like to have all these fans who might not really know who you are just come up to you mm -hmm. and, and congratulate you and talk to you and getting to know some of the junior nation it's been a great experience. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to run for another team. I mean, it's it's junior motorsports, you know. Uh, I have all the drivers in the in the Xfinity Series kind of behind my back, and I have the K&N drivers from 
GMS and I have all the assets pretty much I can, if I'm struggling or I need some advice from whether it be on or off the track. I mean, I got driver's edge for off track stuff and whatnot, but I have everyone to kind of lean on for support. And I'm really going to take advantage of everything that I have this year and hopefully move on next year with all that information. And talk about driver's edge a little bit, because that's sort of a new program that was mm-hmm. launched this year. You're in the first driver's edge class, I mm-hmm. guess. What has it been like dealing with that program and, you know, Lauren and everybody over there and me, have you got to talk to any of the other drivers that are in the program and, and kind of learn off of them any? Yeah, I've learned from the drivers just a little bit. Um, I haven't spent too much time with them though, since I'm being on the West coast and East yeah. coast a lot of the time. But uh, yeah, Lauren's been a great help to me this year in the past year is getting, he's gotten to me where I am today and I thank him. I can't thank him enough for everything he's done for me. And uh, the driver's edge has been a great, great experience for me. Yeah, it's got to be huge. And, and going back to your, your junior motorsports crew, I know you hit on Josh a lot, but mm-hmm. you've got a, a, a stellar crew chief and mm-hmm. Brian and a mm-hmm. huge spotter in Ernie. What mm-hmm. have you been able to lean on them and kind of get to know them and learn off of them? Because I know you've told me personally, Ernie has been a huge help to you. Oh yeah. Ernie's uh, definitely the best spotter I've ever had in my racing career. I mean, Ernie's uh he like the, the coaching spotter a little bit. Yeah. He's not like the spotter that tells you He's more of a coaching spotter, I guess, is the way you could describe it. And he helps me on the tra- on the racetrack. And then as soon as I come off the racetrack, he's always telling me what I did wrong. And uh, it's usually more wrong than right. Yeah. But uh, that's kind of what I need to get better. So uh, I'm, there's no hard feelings there. And Brian's been a great crew chief for me, getting the car good every single time I go into the racetrack. And uh, I can't thank Steven enough for all the hard work he puts into the race cars, too. So I know we've talked about your late model stuff a lot but you actually got the chance to go back on the west coast and actually do a race on the dirt for the first time in a while this year what was what was that like transitioning back from you know getting the mindset of Mm -hmm. you know you're driving pavement to going back and slinging some dirt on the west coast it was i mean i was so happy to go and run some (laughs) some dirt and some open wheel cars it's been a while since i ran those cars and it wasn't my car but my car was running that night just with a different driver in it and it was it was like kind of going back to my roots a little bit. I had so much fun just throwing it sideways, going to the corners, but it was it was it was good to kind of go back from what I came from. And you know, obviously you're doing a lot of, of pavement stuff and mm-hmm. dirt stuff, and you've got a lot of people in the the race face brand development sort of you know world kind of mm-hmm. watching you go back and forth and come to this. What has it been like being a part of that program and, and getting brought up and, and meeting all of these people and getting to work with, with everybody? Yeah, I mean, like with the Driver's Edge and Junior Motorsports drivers, I get to kind of lean on them and whatnot. Um, it's almost like the same in, in Race Face. There's a lot of great drivers in, in that program that I'm a part of. And, uh, you know, to, to be with those guys, it's almost like having another Junior Motorsports behind yeah. me, kind of being able to lean on those guys. And also setting kind of an example for the for the kids in the next program that Rod has going on. Um, you know, I, I want to be the best I can be so that when they hopefully are in my position later on down the road, they have something to kind of base themselves off of. And, you know, talk about, because it's not you that do, does it all alone here. Mm-hmm. Talk about some of the sponsors you got on the car. Who do you got to thank? Who makes this all happen for Adam Lemke? I want to thank Slick Products for coming on this year, GoPro, and my dad, and everyone at Race Face, and Junior Motorsports, and Driver's Edge, and everyone kind of getting behind me this year. Well, Adam, we appreciate you taking the time out of the, the busy time you got here on the East Coast to sitting down and, and doing another Race Face Spotlight with us, and we wish you the best of luck at Motorbahn. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And that's going to do it for this episode of Race Face Spotlight. You can catch up on any of our Race Face shows by going to raceface.tv on demand. I'm Chris Murdoch. Thanks for watching.